Okay, today I want to consider some verses out of Matthew chapter 16, and I'll just read from verse 13. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he began asking his disciples, saying, Who do the people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, but others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not overpower it or prevail against it, some versions say. Now, various groups do different things with these verses, okay? There's a number of things that we can consider here. Uh, to start with, uh, when Simon Peter answers and says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, notice he doesn't say, Thou art a Christ or a Son. You know, you're, you're one of a special kind, okay? Uh, and then secondly, uh, what people often do is they take a verse like this and they uh, reject one of the most basic principles of biblical interpretation that is let everything be confirmed out of the mouth of two or three witnesses now throughout the scripture the rock is always referred to as something stable like God he's the rock okay uh, the chief cornerstone and we're gonna read some passages to validate that uh, but one of the things that some of the cults do, especially like the Mormons, what they've done is they've taken this passage and they've said, upon this rock, and the rock, they say, is revelation. Okay, so this is how they twist it. Uh, and what they do is, verse 17, it says, Jesus answered and said to him, because, or blessed are you, Simon Brajona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who was in heaven. So what they say is, the blessing here is the revelation. And so they use that to validate or to justify their adding to the scripture, adding the Book of Mormon, Pearl of Great Price, Doctrine and Covenants, and a whole list of other things. So an ongoing revelation is their rock. And I can't see any kind of stability in that if it can always change. And, and obviously the Mormons, uh, their gospel is always changing the Book of Mormon and, and everything is constantly being updated. The revelation is always being updated. So there's not much stability or foundation in the religion. So, but what the Catholics do, of course, is they say that Peter is the rock. He's the one that started their church and blah, blah, blah. The problem with that idea is it flies in the face of the history of who the rock is in the Old Testament. Uh, for example, Isaiah 28, verse 16, says this, So this is what the Lord God says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, and the one who believes will never be shaken. Okay, well, you can believe in Peter and you can be shaken. Or you could believe in the Church of Rome and be shaken because it has many problems. And Peter, you know, he denied Christ three times. And more than that, uh, over in um, Galatians, uh, at one point, Apostle Paul had to rebuke him publicly for hypocrisy. That's in Galatians chapter 2, verse 11. Now, throughout the Bible, the rock is, is always God. And here's a few examples. Uh, in the Song of Moses, Deuteronomy 32, verse 4, it says, The rock, his work is perfect. Now, this is certainly not something we could say about Peter, who was prone to jump to conclusions and being carried away by peer pressure. Then in Psalm 62, verse 1 and 2, it says, My soul waits in silence for God only, for him, or from him is my salvation. He only is my rock, only, important word there, and my salvation, my stronghold, I shall not be greatly shaken. Uh, Peter is not our salvation. And here's the problem. When people look to the church as their savior or as their salvation, uh, churches all have problems, especially the Church of Rome. They've added all kinds of stuff in the past you know, 2,000 years. Now, it started out on the right 
track, obviously, the Church of Rome. Uh, Paul wrote a letter to the Romans, and it, it, it was doing great things for several hundred years. And then uh, after the Council of Nicaea, uh, things began to kind of go down the toilet uh, with uh, the Council of Ephesus, and when Mary was elevated to being co-equal or co-redeemer with Christ, uh, then the church began to have all kinds of weird problems. Uh, then there's the Psalm of David that reads, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my rock, my rock, in whom I take refuge. Okay, now we can see this is uh, Psalm 18, verse 2, and 2 Samuel 22, uh, 2, verse 3. And those that prefer Peter as their rock apparently do not read the Old Testament or care what it says. Uh, when one places their faith in the church or a person rather than Christ, they're setting themselves up for a painful disappointment. 